welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. Um, I'm happy to be finally making espressos again, getting ready for the fall. Uh, but I wanted to share how I've been making espresso lately and how I've been brewing it with the Tiger Claw. So every time you do, um, you pull a shot of espresso on a different coffee, you typically have to dial it in, right? And if you don't know what dial in means, it's like you have to finagle with your machine to get the best shot possible, uh, the best tasting shot possible. Okay, so there's a lot of rules out there. I'm sure you guys know. This isn't really a tutorial per se, but I want to show you what I've been doing and how I've been doing it with Tiger Claw, my little Omni Roast, that supposedly you can take from your espresso to the brew to the French press, all right? So I've really tried to design it in a way that it will taste well or it will taste good and uh, brew well amongst all these sort of like typical home methods of brew, okay? <laughs> so I have a bag here of almost like um, over a month old coffee. Now in my experience, for some reason, I pull better shots with uh, about a month old bag of coffee. I don't know, I don't know what it is. So um, I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna exhibit that for you guys. I have like, whenever I, I do brew some espresso, I don't want it to be too old, like maybe over like two months old or something like that. We're really on the cusp right here, brewed on July 3rd. Um, but like I'll have like random coffee here in this can that I've had kind of like laying left over. Um, I've brewed like Mill City Roasters, which was brewed on a little bit closer to, to us, so July 31st. Got some really great shots out of this one. I didn't try this one because I don't really like acidic espresso. I like sweet espresso. So conversely to pour over, right? Because I really like acidic pour over. So I'm just going to show you with this. I'm dialed already for a specific coffee actually for Mill City Roasters because I've been loving how this is tasting. And um, so we may have to do some changes. Now I want to let you know that I have made some adjustments to my Barista uh, Breville Express. It's not the Impress or anything like that. We got this a couple years ago now. Um, it does well enough for me at home. I'm not a big espresso person. Um, I don't get too finicky about it. As long as it tastes good, I'm happy, okay? Um, so a couple things that I have modified. I have this little, you know, grounds catcher here, sort of like a funnel. And then I've got the open porta filter. I do use this sort of, um, Distributor and tamper all in one. Pretty cheap, I think. Um, the water I use, sorry to say, but I use tap and my water is pretty hard and I am okay with it. <laughs> I was, you know, I know it's not great for my machine, but I'm pretty good about cleaning my machine and being sort of like, you know, compromising like, well, I don't drink a lot of espresso, and when I do, you know, like, I'm not that finicky about it, so take that as you will. And um, I do use the grinder here. I can't use this guy. I can't use this guy. It's just too coarse, so I use this one. Now, a couple of things that I modified on this machine. Okay, I programmed the double shot to 36 grams yield. Yield because my dose is 18, okay? Like as precise as I can be on the 18. So I use my little jewelry scale, which is more accurate than, well, it's pretty close, I think, to this. But say to like a kitchen scale, okay? So I just use this, and it's small, so it fits under here if I wanna be very persnickety about it. Um, so to program is really easy, okay? I don't think anybody uses single shot on this guy. <laughs> So you go, you turn this on. And um, I've heard about preheating it and I've played around with that. And you know what? Yeah, into the fourth shot if I'm like, and we're probably gonna get there today. Um, the fourth shot, I'm, I'm at the right temperature. So however long that is. But like the first one, it's probably not gonna be the best. You know, one out of four. So to program it, you hit program, it'll start to blink 
And then when you're ready to pull your shot, you'll do the whole thing. You'll hit this and then um, it'll, it'll brew. And then once you get to 36, you hit the button yourself and then it'll kind of program itself. Okay, double shot. I want to go for 36 grams of output because before it was giving me 24, something like that, something little, 17, 24, something like that. Okay. I don't know that it also depends on like your grind size and everything, but all right. Grind amount. I have it open all the way because I measure my coffee first on the scale and I single dose it every single time. Um, I haven't been able to like time it or anything like that, or play. I don't want to play with this. So I just measure it out and I, and I drop it in there single dose. The burrs in here. Okay. You can adjust them. So we have this. Got some random little beans. I was doing it the wrong way. Okay. So this thing right here. Okay. You can take this off. You just pull it out like that. I didn't know this. I'll link to the guy who is teaching me. Um, but you could see like little um, numbers in here. So if you turn this top plastic part with the little uh, red notch, you can adjust it and you can go coarse or you can go finer. So I was at five originally, like I think stock, it comes at five and um, I put it at four. So I'm only going to adjust this if I can't seem to find the right adjustment here. Okay. So I'm just going to leave it at four. I don't know. Rolling off what we did with Mill City Roasters medium grind. And we're also putting a medium, I mean, medium roast. We're also going to put a medium roast through here. Okay. Well, now I got a bunch of beans in there. Let me see. Okay. There you go. All right, so this guy is on four, okay? So that's on four and that's on four, wide open. Now, we're gonna dose 18 grams. Okay. Tiger claw. And we're going to track our progress of dosing and dialing in in this handy dandy little book we have here. I got it from Hesea. All right. Put it up here. Okay. This whole thing is filled with coffee. <laughs> All right, nice. Okay. Oh, we need cups. So let's just see where we're at. And we're gonna time it. Probably gonna be messy, hopefully not. So the open portafilter gives you a chance to see how evenly you're tamping. That's the theory. 
Uh, plus it's prettier and whatnot, man. We're at 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Wow, okay. So we're a little we're a little long there in the program. That was about 30 seconds. I forgot to hit the thingy. Okay, so here's the shot. All right. So at least it wasn't messy. So at least we tamped okay. We distributed, we tamped okay. Let's taste it. Okay, it's on the bitter side because why? It ran longer, didn't it? So what I can do, right, without hitting program and stuff like that, once I hit 36 on my yield, I can just hit that button again and then stop it, right? So it would be less bitter. So we're getting an over extraction because it went long. It went to what, 46? Um, 46, so yeah, it's bitter. The acidity is good. We should have wrote that down first. So we're really on the um, espresso. We're on four. We're on 18. On the dose, the yield was 46. Brew time was 30 seconds. Okay, so bitter. Okay, that was the first one. Great. I think that was a really great start. So let's empty this guy. The puck gets stuck in there. You just give it a little. See how wet it is too? Another indication of over extraction. And um, so let's clean it. Yeah, I feel like if we stopped at even 36, 37, like that, probably would have been all right. So we're gonna toss this. This is the only time I like waste the most coffee. It just happens. <laughs> it happens. I don't know how helpful these are, but like this is just what I do and it, I don't know. If anything, give you an idea of where I'm coming from when I roast something or call something Omni Roast. Okay, put this little guy back on. Okay. And let's measure out again. 18 gram. I mean, now that I am getting it in the uh, more espresso because it's like here and it's more accessible to, me, accessible to me and just better in the coffee lab. I'm almost like more motivated to have more espresso and to keep learning about espresso and the way that my roasts will affect it and what you guys are maybe drinking. That's really important to me. Like I want to know because a lot of I think a lot of my customers have that same machine, right? So I definitely want to be in tune with what you guys are drinking and tasting. Um, the bitterness, flavor's good though. Just a solid, it's milk chocolate. Okay. Love this thing because every uh, grounds were going everywhere. It was quite annoying. It's a tamp and then a quarter, quarter turn. Okay. Okay. So again, the only thing I feel that we really need to adjust is. The brew time, okay? I think it, we did really good. Everything else was great. Um, okay. We're gonna watch this, the yield for 36, and we're gonna hit this button and hit stop. We're also gonna time it.
28. Land on 38, but it looks beautiful, I must say. This, I think, is going to be pretty good. Okay, so without steering. Beautiful crema, though. Let's just... <laughs> Let's just admire that for a minute. Um, I'm usually shit at espresso, so I'm always really um, stoked when something just goes decently well. So let's try it. Well. Mmm. Wow. The apricot and the fruit really came alive in this shot. That's really nice. 28, we were at 38. Let me write that down. 18, uh, with 38, and 28. Great, apricot. The acidity really improved, not bitter. Wow. All right, I'm not trying to like <laughs> toot my own horn too much, but Okay, let's give this a little steer. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. There you go. <laughs> Tiger Claw. Espresso, double shot. It's a four here, it's a four here. It's 36 out, it's 18 in. It's very good. On the second shot, on the second pool, I think it's great. Mm. Sort of like jammy. There's a bitterness coming on the finish now at the end where it gets really like toothache sweet. Really great acidity. It's big milk chocolate. It's big milk chocolate. Mmm. Damn, dog. Yeah. Month old or more. Right here. July 3rd. And why does that work? Let's talk about that. Well, you know, the coffee is going through such an aggressive brewing thing right? Method. So if you were to brew this super, super fresh, like I roasted it two days ago, you would get an incredible crema, right? But I think you wouldn't get that sort of like grounded sweetness and uh, developed acidity. It would just taste very harsh and astringent almost. And I've, I, I do that all the time. <laughs> and I usually get that with a light roasted coffee and a rondette through here too. Um, and a sort of thin, just not the best, um, like an older light roast. I just don't like it. It doesn't taste great to me, but a medium roasted blend or coffee that does well under pressure, under this kind of pressure, right? I think our Breville does nine bar. Um, and it does it well enough. And for me at home, you know, at least it's not super sour. Like I hate going to cafe and getting a sour shot and just like, I don't want to tell you that. I'll, I just drink it. I don't even wait. I don't even tell you. I just drink it. I drink your little sparkling water and whatnot. And I'm just like, damn it. <laughs> so for me at home, I don't think I fare too, too, be, uh, too poorly. Yeah, that last bit is super sweet. Nice. Okay. So that is my, how I'm doing at home. And if you have the same machine and uh, you want to try that, what the hell, where is it? Okay. Yeah, we don't get really clean pucks out of there, but it's all right. And don't let, again, same thing with the roasting, okay? Don't let the numbers kind of fudge you up too much. I know there's, there are guidelines for sure, but you know, if you like it that way, cool. Like brew it that way. All right. Same thing. Same thing over here. I feel at least at home. And um, what else was I gonna say? A couple of things. This is a non-pressurized basket, okay? And I know Jordan, 
and I were going back and forth about the pressurized basket versus the non-pressurized. I use the non-pressurized and it's because for one, it's my ego. <laughs> Honestly, I'll just tell you straight up, okay? My ego says, Meg, you must master this non-pressurized basket um, so you can learn and do it correctly. That's what my ego is telling me, even though there is, there's no correct way, okay? Don't listen to my ego, but that is what my ego is telling me. I'm just gonna be straight up. I'm straight up, that's what I do, okay? So with this, they, got, they give you a pressurized basket, okay? And when I was doing my research a long time ago, five days ago, they were telling me that this pressurized basket gives you a faux crema. And I was like, faux? <laughs> I don't want no faux crema. Like, I want to know if I got the crema or not, all right? So I want to just, George, it's nothing. It's just me, okay? I just want to know the truth about my skills here at this Barista Express at home, all right? So do not feel ashamed for using this, all right? Um, even though I, not that I feel ashamed, but I'll, be, I'll just be like, ah, I wanna learn, I wanna learn this, I wanna master this non-pressurized basket, okay? But do not be ashamed if you use this. Don't feel bad about it, all right? Sometimes when I'm not getting it, and I'm like, dude, I'm not dialing in. I've wasted five shots already. I'll switch to this. I did that like two weeks ago. I was like, what the hell, dude? So I switched. But don't feel bad, all right? There is no shame. I just like this because I want a true reflection of maybe, I guess, the max that I could do here at home. The max that I could do. I want this, not because it looks pretty, because it will tell me if I messed up tamping and I want to learn. So that's, that's where I'm coming from, okay? Um, so far, I'm very happy with it. Let your taste buds guide you. I'm not gonna yuck your yum, as the great Steve and Nikki say. I'm not gonna yuck your yum. Uh, you're gonna like what you like, and I think that's fine, okay? I just, I love this. I got this today, honestly. I've been doing everything like by hand, and I would waste a lot of coffee. This is great. Um, you can find, it's like a, what do you call it? It's um, 54 millimeter portafilter doser for the Breville Barista Express, okay? $13, 15 bucks. Anyway, that's what I got for you. Espresso with the Tiger Claw. Omni Roast. You already know it tastes good in pour over. French press. Dare I say. Fiend. You got a little Fiend filter at home for Vietnamese coffee? That'll be good too. Omni Roast. All right, see you in the next one. Bye.